do the sex. <laughs> Locker Room Talk and Shots listeners and She Explores Life readers enjoy steep exclusive discounts on products from some of the biggest brands in the sexual health and wellness industry when you use my special codes. You receive 20% off all Fun Factory products when you use my special code S. ELS20 and you receive 15% off revolutionary brands Womanizer, We Vibe, and Love Honey when you use my special code Explores15 and you receive a whopping 30% off all velvet brands. That includes The Thruster, Lassier, and Voila when you use my special code Explores30. But that's not all. Scroll down, click the link, sign up for my e-newsletter, and you'll receive these discounts and more, including pop-up sales from these brands and others right in your inbox. You will never have to pay full price for lube, vibes, lingerie, you know, all the spicy stuff that keeps you coming back for more. Today's Locker Room Talk and Shots topic is cock and ball torture. By listener request, I had a listener, a brave listener, reach out to me to request cock and ball torture information podcast episode. And so listen, guys, you can scroll down to the description of this podcast. You will find a link to a voicemail where you can send me your questions and I will do episodes by request or I'll get your, your questions answered. But this question came at a particularly good time. We are heading into October kink month, also Locktober. Uh, if you've been around for any amount of time, you know that my most popular episodes tend to be about male chastity and um, locking up cocks. But we're next leveling the conversation. And uh, you, if you've been listening for any time at all, you also know in the episode about uh, getting creative with cocks, my go-to was to slap one. I don't know. I think that tells you a little bit about me. Don't do any of that without consent. But yeah, I am not qualified to talk to you about cock and ball torture, but this is pretty exciting. I have someone here who definitely, definitely is is qualified to walk us through, uh, you know, torturing cocks and balls, which I'm kind of shockingly surprised about. So my guest today is Lisa Finn. She is a Brooklyn-based sex educator for Babeland and sibling store Good Vibes. She has been featured in publications such as the New York Times, Huffington Post, Cosmo, that's where I found you, Forbes, GQ, and many more. And she has led dozens of workshops everywhere from Ivy Leagues to uh, to nightclubs. Finn absolutely loves helping first-timers to feel unashamed to explore their curiosities, especially in kink. And she leases humor into education as a reminder that pleasure should always be fun. And we talk about that a lot on this podcast. Uh, but before I go any further, uh, Lisa, will you take a moment to introduce yourself to my listeners? Absolutely. Hi, everyone. I am so stoked to be here. So stoked to be talking about some CBT, uh, not, you know, cognitive behavioral therapy. Um, but uh, I have been working as a sex educator with Babeland now for um, over seven years. Uh, I also work with their sibling company, Good Vibrations. Uh, so if you're out in San Francisco, Good Vibes has been around since 1977, which is wild. Love that. Uh, Babeland is also celebrating our 30th anniversary this month, actually. Um, but uh, I have worked in sex toy shops. Um, like Annette was saying, I've taught workshops um, everywhere from Columbia University to tying up people in a dive bar. Um, I love just how vast this world of sex and kink and desire and pleasure is. Um, and I think that's one of the reasons why I'm really excited to talk about this topic in particular, because this is such a divisive topic where some people are like, oh my God, no, 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 no. And other people are like, yeah. Yeah, please. Um, so to introduce some people to something that might be really taboo is one of my favorite things to do. So I'm so, so stoked to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, I am stoked to have you here too. And and that is exactly what we love to do on this podcast. Now, listeners, and usually I give you the rundown on why you should stick uh, through to the end of a podcast for 
takeaways. But this whole episode is going to be a takeaway. So (laughs) from the beginning to the end, we are going to give you the rundown on what CBT, and I may use that a little bit more throughout this podcast so that when I post videos, they don't get shut down on me, um, on what it is, uh, why why people want to do it, how to keep it safe, how to do it. We're even going to tell you what equipment you can use doing it. So uh, you just you just want to stick around because this is going to be a fun conversation. Uh, so it is nine o'clock where I am, but Lisa, it's noon where you are. We're still going to through. We're going to cheers in with some. I've got coffee. What do, what do you do? I've got a shot of whiskey. She's got whiskey. I've got vodka for the end. <laughs> And I will take my shot at the end. It's still 9 a.m. So I'm going to do coffee. You know, maybe, maybe I'll just do a little halfsy. And then wanna... you'll finish out. You'll finish off with me. <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> All right. Let's cheers. Let's get into it. Let's talk about cheers. Mm. Let's just, I mean, let's just start with the definition. What is CBT, cock and ball torture? Yeah, so CBT can stand for cock and ball torture, cock and ball torment. Um, Some people prefer uh, the word torment if they're talking a little bit more about the mental side of things rather than the physical side of things. Um, And then some people will just refer to it as cock and ball play. So that's a little bit more overarching. It doesn't necessarily mean that there has to be any sort of like sadomasochism involved. Um, But essentially it is the... It is a sexual activity that involves the application of sensation, usually like a really intense sensation, uh, commonly pain, to the penis and testicles for the sake of pleasure. Um, So like I said, CBT focuses more on the physical aspect when we talk about it um, generally, but there is also that mental aspect. There's a lot of psychological stuff to it. So there's degradation, humiliation. In some cases, there's emasculation. Um, So all of these things sort of come together to form what CBT is overall. Can we talk about some of the sensations or applications of sensations that are encompassed in CBT? Because I know that um, there are a wide variety of sensations that can be applied to the cocks and the balls during this activity. Yeah, there is a huge, huge range of sensations. You can go from Uh, a more mild, and I'm using air quotes here because everything is subjective when it comes to kink, uh, more mild sensations. So like using a feather, tickling the balls, uh, maybe a Wartenberg wheel, maybe using your nails to sort of scratch along the surface. Um, Maybe it's something more intense, like adding pressure, uh, impact play, using hot wax, kicking, Uh, ball busting is a very popular form of CBT, which is when you put intense impact or pressure, uh, such as like stepping on the testicles. It could be overstimulation. So holding a really powerful vibrator against the cock to the point where it gets overstimulated. Uh, You could do constriction play or even chastity play. Um, You can do temperature play, you know, uh, making the cock really cold or making the cock really warm. Um, It can also get really intense uh, physically with things like sounding, which is when you insert a rod into the urethra. It could be piercing play, it could be cutting. Um, There are so many different ways to uh, participate in CBT, but the overarching thing is some form of pain, some form of um, intense sensation, uh, or some form of of degradation sort of uh, involved in this. And that's why we say CBT, torture or torment, uh, as the acronym for it. So it sounds like CBT really can be done at a multitude of levels, right? From lighter sensations to like really intense uh, urethral play, piercing, etc. Uh, not to intimidate newcomers. You don't have to go for that. Uh, to be clear, it doesn't always include humiliation. It doesn't always include male chastity, but it's sort of like a choose your own adventure. Is that correct? Absolutely. I mean, your CBT can be something as simple as 
I like to wear really, really tight underwear because I like that sensation of like feeling really compressed, feeling a lot of pressure. It could be, I like the idea of someone threatening my cock, not actually doing anything to it. That could be a form of it. Um, it this The scope is so, so vast and so broad that whatever made you want to listen to this today, whatever sort of inspired you, it probably falls under the umbrella of CBT. I like the idea of threatening a cock. I mean, this is a whole new, <laughs> like I never even thought about threatening. I'm totally thinking about threatening cocks right now. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, just found a new kink that I have. Uh, <laughs> so the next question I have for you is why would a man or a penis and cock and ball mm -hmm. owner uh, want to do this? What is the draw? Yeah. So when we're talking about the physical sensations, um, any sort of intense sensation is going to give you that endorphin rush, that adrenaline rush, um, especially when paired with arousal. Uh, all of these sensations are going to feel even more intense. Uh, you know, there's that pain for pleasure sort of situation that definitely holds hands here with uh, sadomasochism. Um, also, it's super taboo. Uh, so, you know, the idea of liking getting hit in the balls, the idea of liking someone telling you that you're a tiny penis man, whatever it is that's getting you off, um, that's taboo. You know, a lot of people feel, uh, might feel a sense of shame around it, but that's what makes it hot for them. It's that nice little horseshoe of shame coming back around into empowerment. Um, for some people, like we were saying, the degradation, uh, liking someone being cruel to them in this aspect, liking the power dynamic of submitting or having someone uh, sort of take that control over you. Um, for some folks, it could be an emasculation thing or a sissification thing, or on the other end of it, it could be an adoration of masculinity, right? How much can you handle? How much can you take? How strong is your cock? How strong are your balls? Um, so again, that big spectrum there. Uh, there could be sort of like a predatory sense to it, right? Uh, the idea of feeling helpless, this idea, idea of having something that is so intimate, something that is so delicate in somebody else's hands, maybe you know, uh, actually physically in their hands um, and sort of playing with the idea of this being something that is a, a delicate part of the body. And so the risk that comes with it as well. All right. That makes sense to me. I mean, I'm in. <laughs> it makes <laughs> sense to me. Now, I think uh, you really covered a broad spectrum of reasons. It doesn't have to be one thing. Right. I think people tend to take kinks like this and think, oh, it means this about somebody. But there can be just so many things. It can be empowering. It can be uh, letting go of control. There's just a lot of things that can draw somebody to it. So I think an obvious question is, is CBT safe? It is if you do it correctly. Um, so there are a lot of safety things to consider, but the first and foremost is going to be that consent, right? Um, so there is an acronym called RAC, which stands for Risk Aware Consensual Kink, um, because CBT has so many uh, physical aspects to it, again, depending on what you're doing. If you're tickling somebody, this may be on a much gentler side of the risk. Um, but, you know, if you're sounding or piercing to somebody, uh, that can have a very high risk. So you want to make sure that you're going through the scene negotiation, you're talking about uh, what everybody's expectations are and levels are, especially because this topic has so many things that it could encompass. Uh, you're going to want to discuss aftercare as well. That's going to be really important, um, not only for the dynamic between you and your partner, but also for you know, physical relief, making sure that you're taking care of your body afterwards. Uh, you know, do you need to ice it? Do you need to take some time uh, to prevent any injury that you didn't want to happen? Um, with this sort of uh, realm of consent as well, um, talking about what it's going to look like for your partner to react 
So um, for some folks, the yelping, the whimpering, the, the screaming, the crying, the whining, that's part of it. That's their reaction to this. And that's something that they want to have as a reaction. Um, but for some people, that could be the flag of, oh, no, we've gone too far. So you want to go ahead and discuss that beforehand. Um, CBT is something that really, really needs safe words uh, or safe actions if the person has the ability to go, uh, or the potential rather, to go nonverbal. Um, so like holding a squeaky toy, uh, a ring of keys that they could throw, tapping somebody out like they're wrestling. Um, and the top is responsible for this too, checking in, maybe asking colors if you want to do color safe words. So like um, hey, what's your color? Red, stop, yellow, slow down, green, this feels great, keep going. Um, and then there is the physical risk as well, right? Yeah, so the testicles themselves, like inside the scrotal sac, those are going to be super delicate. The scrotal sac, not as much, and I can talk about that a little bit more when we're talking about ways to play with the balls. Um, but erectile tissue as well. So like the shaft of the dick, um, Peyronie's disease is, uh, a disease that results in, it's interesting that they use the word disease, but I'm not a medical doctor. Um, it's a condition that results from scar tissue that develops on the penis from an injury, usually during sex. Um, and that can cause curved or painful erections. So that's something that you want to be mindful of, uh, testicular torsion, uh, which is, you know, the, the twisting of the testicles inside the scrotal sac, um, that can be a very critical condition if not taken care of. Um, and there's also the potential for testicles to rupture, um, Beyond that, infection, if you're cutting or piercing, um, anything like that, if you're binding for a while, you want to look out for loss of feeling, discoloration, swelling, uh, CBT, you really do need to be in tune with your body. Um, again, because with that adrenaline and those endorphins that are rushing through your system when you're experiencing this, uh, can make your pain tolerance a little bit higher. So you want to make sure you're not using numbing creams or anything that could prevent your body's signal of, hey, we need to stop. There's bad pain going on here. You don't want to disrupt any of that. Right. So I guess I would add in like getting inebriated and participating in this kind of event is a no-no <laughs> like sobriety or close to sobriety needs to be had I assume yeah absolutely especially if you're you're just sort of stepping into it if this is your first time experiencing it um because these are really unique sensations and again with that adrenaline you want to make sure that you have a good read of your body a good read of those responses okay that's excellent advice so yes, it's potentially dangerous, but if you know what you're doing and you start out slow and you remember all the rules of consent, which we talk about all the time here, it can be safe and enjoyable. So I want to start just launching into techniques and approaches to CBT. And what I will say to listeners is after we kind of go through dipping your toe in the water, then like getting into it, and then some advanced level conversations around how to perform CBT. Uh, at the end of this podcast, we will be talking about if this has piqued your interest, whether you're someone who wants to do it to your partner, or you're a person who has a cock and wants to experience it, we'll be talking about how are you going to go from this podcast to opening the conversation with your partner, because it can be awkward right? Uh, if, if you haven't already been in conversation with your partner about kink. But for right now, let's dive in. For somebody who is just now realizing they're interested in participating in CBT, what is your advice for getting started? What are some beginner techniques and even toys or equipment that might be appropriate? Yeah, I really liked what you said about starting slow, because that's going to be, you know, you want to take the time to learn these sensations. So starting slow and building up gradually, um, we come equipped with a lot of really great tools for CBT. Uh, you know, our hands, our fingers, our nails, mouths, teeth, feet. Uh, feet is a big one for CBT, people that like being stepped on or maybe having uh, someone squish their uh, balls or their penis between their feet. Uh, that is a huge fetish here. 
Um, then there's, you know, the mind tools. So the threat, the illusion of threat, um, humiliation, denial, helplessness, tease. Um, so when you're starting off uh, with CBT, if you're working with a partner and that idea of that power and that control is something that turns you on, have them threaten you. Have them tell you what they would like to do so you can gauge what is piquing your interest and take it from there. Um, make the dialogue part of the play. Uh, you know, using dirty talk as a form of consent, as a form of checking in, is something that can really keep you in the headspace. And it could be a really good way to sort of determine in that moment, if you're like, all right, broad scope, CBT, I know I want to try it, but I'm not sure particularly what pieces are of interest to me. Um, that could be a really good way to facilitate that conversation. All right. So now you've gotten some threatening and mm -hmm. you're you're kind of ready to take it to the next level. What What are some actual applications of torture? that you could start with? Yeah, so um, I mentioned before that the testicles are the things that are um, really the most delicate part of that. Uh, so when we think about the balls being super delicate, um, and this is actually where a lot of people realize that they have this kink, uh, thinking about the easiest way to injure someone with a penis, you're gonna think about kicking them in the balls, right? Um, so that that sort of like doubled over from a light tap sort of idea. Um, the nerve endings that go from the testicular area go like all the way deep into the groin. So that is a pain that resonates really deep inside the body. The scrotal skin, however, is very akin to the skin of the inner labia. Um, so if you want to put pressure on it, say you're going to use like the pads of your fingers, you can really like squeeze. And actually, um, I know we're both wearing headphones, but the earlobe is also a really good way to sort of like touch and feel this sensation. Uh, so if you're listening and you want to sort of like pinch your earlobe with flat fingers, you could put like a lot, a lot of pressure on it and you're going to be able to feel it, but it's not going to be painful. But if you go ahead and use your nails or if you use your teeth, you're going to be able to feel that. So playing with pinching, playing with pressure, um, starting off on that scrotal skin and seeing how it feels, tugging, the feeling of having weight tugging against the body is something that's super popular in CBT. Um, and then uh, extreme pressure. So maybe giving somebody a hand job and really beginning to squeeze down on it as you go. Um, again, adding pressure a little bit at a time so that you can sort of like gauge how it feels. Um, pulling sensations, pinching sensations. And then from there realizing like, oh, okay, the thing that I really liked that you did was that compression. I really liked that sensation of like having my cock squished or the pinching. Um, I really liked that sensation of something sharp on me. The pulling, I really liked the sensation of that weight. We could do all these things with our hands and our mouths to decide from there where we want to take it. Um, slapping is also uh, a really popular way to get started. It uh, is. Again, <laughs> spanking tools um, <laughs> right here on the ends of our arms. Uh, but you can also use uh, other impact play tools. So uh, I have in my hands, uh, it's called the motivator crop. And the end of this crop is longer and thinner than most riding crops. Uh, it is not quite a, um, a cane or a switch, but because the tip is thin, thinner, you're going to get a more um, precise hit. Uh, so that could be really good for playing with the cock and balls because it is, um, you know, in comparison to other places where you may spank on the body, it is a smaller area. Uh, so having something that's more confined, you'll really be able to target where on the cock or the balls you're hitting. Um, also, this is made out of leather, so it's got a really good sting to it, even if you only hit lightly. Um, and for a lot of people, the sound as well is something that's really hot. So this actually has two pieces of leather that slap together. So I'm not even hitting my hand that hard, but it's making a nice loud noise. Um, so using a crop, starting slow, sort of like tapping just gently and then building up. So uh, you can tease your partner with this, 
threatening them just by the look of the crop. Maybe you give it a couple of swings in your hand first to get that anticipation going before actually bringing it down on them. Uh, you can switch up, make a little pattern like light, light, slap, light, slap, not let them know when it is coming next. Again, building that anticipation, um, but using a tool like an impact tool on the cock could be a really good way to get started uh, because you do have a lot of control with this because um, because it's in your hands. It's not something that you're relying on the tool completely to do the work. You still have complete control of this, which means that you can really pace yourself and read your partner as you go. And you can go to YouTube, Annette Benedetti, my YouTube channel, and you can actually see all of the products she's going to be sharing with us so that you can have that visual piece. We will do our best for just listeners to describe them, but you're going to want to run over and see these tools. I will also make sure you guys have a full list of where to get the tools in a follow-up article. So on to the next. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, so balls, right? Balls. Ball torture. Um, the balls are definitely going to be a big highlight of this. Actually, when we talk about CBT, a lot of the stuff that people are referring to really do focus on the balls. And again, it's because they're so delicate. It's because that's where sort of the taboo lies. So there are a lot of toys, uh, called ball stretchers. Um, so I have two here. Uh, this one that I'm holding is called the Silas skin. And it is basically like two thicker cock rings uh, that are attached to one another. So one of the rings will go around the shaft of the penis. And my lovely little stunt dick here will go around the shaft of the penis, just like a cock ring. So it'll go all the way to the base. And then the second ring, um, now mind you, this is a silicone dildo. Uh, so the balls can't really stretch away from the body as is meant to happen with a toy like this but essentially you put that second ring between the balls and the shaft so where the balls hang from the shaft and again a little bit hard to show on a, uh, a silicone cock but what that's going to do is it's going to pull the balls away from the body um, so for some folks uh, that can give that extra stimulation that weight where it feels like something's like pulling it away from the body um, it can also intensify orgasm because it is keeping the balls sort of like down further away from the body. Um, for most folks before they come, the balls will tuck up a little bit. Uh, so having that sort of restriction in keeping those balls down. Now, this one looks pretty intense. Um, so for folks that are listening in, it kind of looks like two tires, but it's actually super, super squishy. So um, it's really, really soft. It's still going to give you that pressure of holding the balls down from the body because of how thick it is, but it's not going to be uh, super rigid. So if this is a sensation that you're not really sure about, um, having something that is soft and squishy is still going to do the job, but it's not going to be a severe sensation uh, like some ball stretchers that are made out of hard silicone. Uh, there are even some that are made out of plastic or metal. Uh, so using a, a squishy material first to sort of see how you like it, it's still going to do that job of keeping the balls pulled away from the body, of giving that sensation of stretching. Um, these come in all different sizes. Like there are ones that are like this one comparatively is decently thin, uh, despite the fact that it's just under an inch. Uh, but there are ones that are a couple of inches long. There are ones that have tethers to them, ones that have weights. Again, anything to sort of pull the balls away from that, uh, away from the body to give that sensation. There are folks that also stretch their balls over time. Um, you know, they'll sort of use this as a way to stretch the skin, um, almost like folks that, um, you know, stretch their earlobes again, comparing, <laughs> comparing things to earlobes. Uh, anybody that's listening with an ear fetish right now, you're welcome. Um, so ball stretching, there's also, uh, ball stretchers that are separators. So what I'm holding in my hand right now, uh, almost looks like a triple cock ring. Um, so there is the ring up top again, wearing this like a cock ring. You could put this at the base of the cock. Some people like to wear it a little bit further up on the cock so that the balls are pulled towards the head of the cock. So you get, uh, stretching not only downwards, but forwards as well, adding that, uh, extra sensation. 
this one has two loops. So you actually individually put each testicle through each loop. So not only is it stretching it down away from the body, um, but it's also separating those testicles. So you get the stretch of the scrotal skin and the testicles themselves. Um, again, a really, really simple tool. Um, it's nothing intimidating. This is, again, just a piece of silicone that's split into three sort of compartments, um, but the sensation that it provides is really intense because of how delicate that area is. So even though this may not look like a heavy CBT device, uh, for you, it might feel like it just depending on how your body reacts to those sensations. Yeah, you're going to want to go check those out. That looks like a great introduction to mm -hmm. um, getting involved with the balls and stretching them. And they aren't intimidating devices. Uh, and I love that, again, you're going to want to go and, and check this out on YouTube because you'll see that they are very stretchy. If you just kind of looked at them on a website to buy, they would look very small and you'd be like, how the hell would I get that over a cock or balls bit? <clears throat> But you can see in the demonstration that the, it is very soft and stretchy and would be a great way to start dipping your toe in the water of the cock and ball stretching. So Yeah, and even then the pressure is something that a lot of people find hot about this. Um, you know, super simple. You could just go with a cock ring and that could be a, a CBT tool. Um, a, a tighter cock ring. So uh, I have here in my hands, this is called the Ahoy. And it's a little bit less stretchy than other cock rings and a little bit more thick than other cock rings. So you can really feel pressure uh, with this one. Um, I also love this one because it's super affordable. I think it's like 15 bucks. Um, so you can wear this on the tip towards the head if you want to put pressure towards the head of the penis, um, towards the back if you want to wear it like a regular cock ring. You can slip the balls through get creative with where you put this because that sensation of pressure is uh, what you would sort of be looking for by using a tool like this. Um, so your cock rings, um, talking about safety again, your cock rings, you want them to be snug. Um, you know, even if we're not talking about CBT, you want your cock ring to be snug so that it works, so that it helps trap that blood flow, um, but you don't want it to cut off the circulation. Even if you are playing with CBT, you do not want to cut off the circulation to your dick, um, especially not for prolonged periods of time. Uh, so keeping in mind, snug, tight even, but not cutting off your circulation. We want constriction, not destruction, if you will. Right. No, don't destroy it because you're going to want to torture it again, right? Yeah, that would be like the uh, end all be all. It's like, oh, I like the idea of castration. Well, you do it once. That's it. <laughs> it's all over. Right. So now you have the cock and ball stretched. What what comes next? Yeah. So from there, you can, uh, like I said, sort of like tug at it, add weight um, or add sensation from there. So you've got yourself in these devices. Um, the balls are being pulled away from the body. So you already have that sensation. This is where you can add in other sensations on top of it. Um, the squeezing, the pressing, the using an impact toy, the adding in some hot wax. Um, if you want the psychological aspect of it, telling someone how they look in it, um, you know, whether we're incorporating praise here and being nice or we're getting degrading with it, um, telling them maybe they have a degradation thing around the size of their penis. Uh, maybe they have a degradation thing about how their balls look. Um, using whatever language it is, that is part of the dynamic that you've discussed beforehand. Um, wearing that for a prolonged period of time. Uh, again, if you have something that's softer, as long as it's not like cutting off any circulation, you can wear that for as long as you'd like. Um, that can be, uh, you know, um, and when I say that, I'm talking about one of the one of the softer ones. Uh, you don't want to keep yourself in a, um, a tight cock ring for longer than like, I'd say 20 minutes at a time. If you're starting off even shorter, you want to make sure that you're being careful. Um, again, 
your genitals are sensitive, they are delicate. Um, but from there, you can incorporate uh, other types of sensation. Um, these can sort of be uh, accessories, if you will, if you just like sort of the aesthetic of it, or that could be the main course of your CBT is that ball stretching to it. What about a man who has had a vasectomy? Will that change how you treat the balls? Does it change the sensation or is it the same either way? So the sensation is very much so with all the nerve endings. Um, so you're still going to have all those nerve endings there uh, after a vasectomy. Um, but you do want to be a little bit more cautious, especially if they've had the vasectomy more recently, um, because there are stitches in there that you don't want to undo. You don't want to put pressure on something that's healing. Um, but overall, the sensations, you'll still be able to feel everything. You'll still be able to um, experience this and enjoy this if it is for you. Okay. All right. So overall, it doesn't like take away from once healed, it doesn't take yes. away from the enjoyment of CBT. So moving into more intermediate, we've, we've stretched the balls, we put the, mm -hmm. the stretcher on, we've learned, uh, maybe we've gotten the crop and, and slapped the cock around a little bit. It sounds super fun. Um, what are some additional tools, sensations. I assume we can bring in restraints because in my mind, the person's already restrained, although that apparent probably doesn't need to be the case. Just in my imagination, that's what's happening. Oh, yeah. You can absolutely restrain the person. You can also tie up the cock. Um, so you do want to make sure that um, you are using something thinner. So usually bondage rope, it is a little bit thicker, um, but using something that is thinner, maybe like a shoelace could be a good place to start um, or using something that's super, super easy to untie uh, a tie, like a necktie or a, a silk tie. That could be something that could be great to restrain because it's soft. You have a little bit of give to it. Um, also just like the look and feel of it. Silk could be really, really hot. Um, there are a lot of folks that enjoy the sensation of silk so much so that it is a fetish for other people. It's just, you know, like silk lingerie could be really hot. Um, but wrapping the cock, not even necessarily tying. So just sort of like almost like you're mummifying the cock, right? So this will be really easy to come undone afterwards because you could just sort of like spiral it out or slip out the cock. Um, but you can add a lot of pressure just when you're putting it on, just sort of feeding it around the cock. You can also go ahead and put a vibrator in there. So maybe you want to put a high powered vibrator like against the frenulum, which is super um, sensitive. Uh, so um, for folks that don't know where the frenulum are, uh, is that are listening, it is a hot spot right on the underside of the penis where the corona, uh, the crown of the penis where the head meets the shaft. So it is a little bit of webbing. If you are someone that is circumcised, that piece of webbing might have been cut off during circumcision but it's not the webbing itself. It's the nerve endings that are underneath it. So even if you don't have that bit of webbing, uh, the frenulum can still be super sensitive. Um, so maybe tying a super uh, strong vibrator to that super sensitive area and using that as a form of overstimulation. Um, bondage tape is also really good here uh, because it only sticks to itself, which is nice, uh, but it can sort of give that um, look and that feel of being bound by yeah. something that is like unable to be gotten out of. It kind of looks like duct tape, which could be really hot, especially if you're um, integrating any sort of like uh, captive play or something like that. Um, if you are a person with a latex fetish as well, kind of looks latexy. Oh, you should um, see this, guys. I, so I am not a familiar with bondage tape. Oh, I yeah. don't know why I'm not. It is super sexy. And you're oh, saying incredible. that it doesn't stick to the skin. No, yeah, it just sticks to itself. So um, kind of hard to do this with. So I am Italian, so I have a decent amount of hair on my arms. <laughs> um, but you can see it's sticking to itself. So I'm tugging at it and it's not coming loose. But when I take it off, it just falls right off my skin. 
um so bondage tape it just it straight up looks like a roll of electrical tape or a roll of duct tape um but it is made out of a um a type of pvc uh so it only adheres to itself and you can reuse it which is nice you can see mine i've uh undone it and redone it a bunch of times so it's a little little bit wrinkly uh but it still will stick to each other uh to itself for however long you want um i also really like bondage tape for anything because you can use it anywhere on the body you can use it as a blindfold you can use it for again sort of like wrapping somebody's entire body uh you can use it as fetish wear um i've worn bondage tape as like a bra almost to go to a party the only place that you don't want to put bondage tape is over your mouth because um it, it can sort of get stuck there uh, almost like a plastic bag so you don't want to use that as a gag or um a way to sort of suppress anybody's breathing uh but yeah bondage tape on a cock could be really good um uh especially if you are a little bit weary about getting it off uh bondage tape is easy to rip so uh you can get out of that pretty quickly whereas if you are using rope if you're tying knots don't do a, a square knot or a hitch knot or whatever fancy knots that you learned bondage on other parts of the body uh just do like a grandma knot or like a, a bunny ear knot like you're tying your shoe uh your shoelaces so that you could get out of it very easily um because you don't have the same ability like with other parts of the body to grab a pair of safety scissors and cut it off um because you don't want to accidentally cut the cock uh, especially if the person becomes flaccid it's a whole big to do so if you are playing with bondage on the cock and you don't have that experience yet go for a silk tie uh go for a shoelace and do a little uh grandma knot that you can easily just like pull to get out of use some bondage tape do something that you could get out of pretty easily um so yeah uh, bondage on the cock, uh, on the balls as well. Again, wrapping them, putting that sensation of tightening them together. Uh, there's actually this as well. This is, uh, this is called a bull bag. So it almost looks like a little like pouch, uh, which I mean, it is a little pouch, uh, made out of a stretchy silicone that you put your balls in and it's going to weigh them down. So this is also uh, sort of like a ball stretching thing, but it's also a constriction thing. So you have your balls inside this uh, and you can feel the pressure of the little pouch sort of holding in your balls together. Um, so that is a bull bag. That's hot. Yeah. That's new to me. Also, like I'm just like, I thought I knew a lot and I don't know shit. That's what I'm realizing. Uh, right now <laughs> yeah there there are so many tools and these are these are tools that are specifically designed with cbt in mind uh something like a, a ball spreader something like a ball bag uh but any sort of bdsm device you can get creative with it um you know like bondage like using a crop you were talking about locktober um a, another form would be a chastity cage um, so some people will argue that like chastity doesn't belong in CBT. Um, I will argue against them and say, let people do what they want. <laughs> but, uh, with a chastity cage in the realm of CBT, we're talking about either, um, taking something away from them. So again, bringing it back into the more psychological aspect of it as is want to happen with chastity or compression. So uh, especially if someone gets an erection while they are in chastity, they're going to feel that pressure against the cock, against the balls. The one that I have here is made out of a silicone blend. So it's actually, it's pretty squishy. Uh, so you do have room in this, but it is still going to keep the cock down. So uh, the one that I'm holding up is made out of silicone. It's got the little space for the balls to go through. It's also got a hole at the tip uh, for if someone is going to come or maybe if you want to incorporate some urethral play as well. 
Um, but another reason why I like soft chastity cages is because you can still add more sensation outside of it. So uh, you can have somebody in this chastity cage and still put pressure against the cock. You can still slap it. You can put vibration against it. And they're going to be able to feel everything despite the fact that they're still having their erection held down, that they're still having that compressed. Chastity also, if we are using something that's not squishy, if we're using something that is made out of metal or a hard plastic um again that compression is going to be part of that play that's hot so i will say one thing i've learned about myself is i love the look of a cock in a cock cage it's like one mm -hmm. of just the hottest things alone that I've ever seen. I had no idea that I would find it for me. It's like lingerie on a penis owning person. Um, and I, and not, I don't want to stray off topic, which is cock and ball torture, but I'm curious about your thoughts on one of the challenges with cock cages I've found is finding the right size. Do you think starting with, um, with something that's soft like that offers that kind of benefit? Yeah, absolutely. Um, especially because it does have that stretch to it. If you put it on and you're like, oh, this is a little bit too loose for me, or, oh, I realized that I have to stretch this. The great thing about um, cock cages is that they will almost all have the measurements on them. And it's one thing to measure your own cock. It's a little bit harder to do it when you're flaccid. Um, it's another thing to actually see how it feels on the body. Um, just like, you know, for folks that go bra shopping, right? Uh, you could know your size, but sometimes the cup's a little bit too big. Sometimes the strap's a little bit too tight. It's going to be the same thing with a cock cage because you have to consider the opening itself, the shaft length. If you are someone with like a mushroom tip where your head's a little bit bigger than your shaft, uh, keeping all these things in consideration when you're shopping, definitely starting off with a soft cage to see how it feels. Although you can't lock this up. So Locktober has to be um, more more of a an idea or a, a fantasy. Um, or, you know, you, you could put a lock on this. It's not going to be effective, but maybe just for the look. For the look, yeah. So can we talk a little bit about urethral play? Mm -hmm. I, first of all, I'm going to assume that urethral play is something that you need to, like, take a class in before you do. I don't know. Can you talk to me about that? I would definitely, definitely suggest taking some form of class first. Um, there are professional uh, doms, dominatrixes that will uh, host these classes. Uh, a lot of them do it virtually, very convenient. Um, but you want to make sure that you know what you're doing. You want to make sure that you are starting small and starting slow. Um, even if the idea of, let's say we're talking about sounding, right? Uh, the idea of putting in like a very large catheter, that's something that you're like, Ooh, that looks so good to me. Still start small. Uh, there are sounding kits that will have ranges of, um, sizes of sounders. So, uh, again, these are little, um, rods uh, that are rounded on both ends, uh, usually made out of metal that you would use to insert urethrally. Uh, you also want to make sure that you are playing very, very sterile. So hands are washed, tools are washed. Maybe we're using nitrile or latex gloves to make sure that everything stays nice and sterile because this is going into the body. This is going into a very sensitive and delicate part of the body. Um, so taking your time with it, um, using uh, a little bit of lubricant if you need to, and making sure that you pee afterwards. Um, if there is a huge tip that I'm going to give for folks that want to get into sounding, it's make sure that you pee afterwards. Um, but you you definitely don't want to hop into this without uh, having that um, that training or at least reading up on it. It's not something that you want to dive into without knowing. Um, a lot of folks that get into sounding... Um, are interested in it because maybe they've had that medical experience, whether they are someone in the medical field or they've had a catheter put in for some uh, some reason before. Um, so sort of having that experience, if it is something that maybe you have experienced outside of the kink world, uh, that experience is great to have under your belt. 
no pun intended. <laughs> um, but uh, definitely do some reading. There are uh, a lot of dangers that could come with it um, on the same realm piercing. Uh, so piercing even more so because we're actually like uh, putting something through the skin. We're actually uh, doing something that could draw blood, uh, making sure really, really sterile. You know what you're doing. You're aware of where major nerve endings are. You're aware of where it needs to be placed on the body. Uh, these are all things that you should take your time with first. Um, and also don't learn how to do these things when you're already like in the bedroom, things are already going. You want to take the time to do your research beforehand because if you are horny and you're just like, all right, got to learn it now, you're probably not going to retain everything that you need to uh do your prep learn your stuff prep your tools make sure that everything is clean sanitary ready to go start slow start small can we talk about somewhere between intro we're just stretching some balls and slapping them a little bit and piercing them <laughs> the in between do you have any toys products approaches you would suggest for someone who's like, all right, I, I already know I'm into this and my partner is into it, but we've we've kind of just been doing one-on-one stuff and we want to up the level, but then what we see out there is people doing some crazy stuff and we're not ready for that. So the mm -hmm. in-between thoughts, suggestions? Yeah. Um, nipple clamps or clothespins. Uh, that is something that is super popular. It has that like look to it as well. Um, so this is also something that you can add slowly to it, whether, uh, you know, adding slowly is to be able to, again, gauge that level of pain, gauge where that tolerance level is, uh, or just sort of like teasing someone, just like slowly adding a pin or a clamp as you go. Um, and then, you know, you can absolutely cover the entire cocknet. Remember I was talking to someone once who said that she had, uh, made her partner's cock look like a blooming onion from <laughs> Outback Steakhouse. Cause it was just all, you know, rows and rows and rows of clothespins just sticking out from it. Um, so that could be a way to play with a more intense sensation. Wax play is another one temperature play so maybe like running an ice cube up and down the cock before um adding another sort of sensation to it um electro sim another thing that you want to you want to do your research ahead of time um so <clears throat> using a, a tens unit on the cock or on the balls for a lot of people uh using electro sim on the head of the penis on the glands of the penis because it is so so sensitive there's so many nerve endings up there you, there are e-stim devices that you can actually buy that are particularly for the cock. There are e-stim cock cages. There are e-stim strokers. Will you take a moment to describe what e-stim is for my listeners? Oh, yeah. yeah. So uh, e-stim is electrostimulation. So it's actually uh, putting uh, electropulses, so like tiny little shocks into the system. Um, so, uh, the device that I referred to earlier, a TENS unit, um, it has these little, uh, pads that conduct the electricity that they have the electricity go through. So you adhere these pads to the body, um, and then you turn on the device and you're going to be able to feel that, uh, very light electrocution. It's not electrocution like you've stuck a fork in an outlet. It is a buzzy, tingly sensation um, that you can increase. Uh, so TENS units are actually used medically to stimulate muscle growth. Um, I actually am using one medically right now. Um, <clears throat> it was funny when they gave it to me. I was like, yeah, I know, I know how to use this. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but it engages all those muscles. It lights up all of those nerve endings. So using electrostim and then following up with something else. So again, starting with that intense stimulation and then moving to something like squeezing, pinching, slapping, whatever it is that you want to get into. Um, the same thing with temperature, right? Using hot wax or running an ice cube up and down the shaft or on the balls and then adding that extra sensation. What you're doing is you're igniting all those nerve endings, right? You're getting them ready. You're getting them prepared. You're getting all of that blood flow rushed to the area so that every single sensation is going to feel more intense. Does any of this end with sex and orgasm? 
Oh, absolutely. Um, there are plenty of people that can get off just from CBT play. Um, now, mind you, uh, some CBT play does restrict erection uh, or could cause erection to just not happen, but you can still have an orgasm without an erection. Uh, but you can also use this as a form of foreplay for sure. Um, you can keep yourself in a, a ball stretcher while having penetrative sex. You can be wearing a cock ring while having penetrative sex. Uh, you could be doing something to overstimulate yourself. So um, maybe having a partner use like a, a powerful vibrator. So I'm holding up a magic wand mini right now, holding a powerful vibrator against the perineum while you're doing other activities. Um, incorporating CBT with uh, a blow job or a hand job. Um, you can really use this at any point in your play. It could be the main course, it could be an appetizer, it could be the dessert. Um, but uh, again, with the understanding that some of these activities will restrict the ability for someone to get or maintain an erection. All right. All right. All right. Do you have any sort of final suggestions, comments, tidbits of information you want to give listeners who are here to find out about CBT? Yeah. Um, do not be afraid to get taboo with it. As long as you're playing safely, uh, you know, I have my box of tools over here um, and I, I just keep on looking at one of them that I didn't bring up, which is my own shoe. Um, you know, thinking about things like having somebody step on you. Um, so getting creative with it, understanding risks, uh, understanding that, you know, there there are going to be risks with a lot of different BDSM acts, especially if it's sadomasochism, because that pain for pleasure, pain is obviously our body's way of letting us know that something isn't right. Um, even, you know, if we're consenting to it, we want to know those those levels but um you know whatever feels good and right for you um you can still call it cbt if it's just someone uh you know sort of scratching your shaft with their nails uh for somebody they may think like oh no that's that's vanilla as hell if that feels like cbt to you if that feels like that intense sensation um if it makes you feel like that's a form of torment or torture or that intense play then that counts if you are someone that's doing urethral sounding while wearing a TENS unit, while having someone, you know, call you names, that's also CBT. Don't feel like these different ways to participate come in any sort of level. Wherever you feel good doing it, that's enough. Don't feel like you're, you know, not able to handle whatever, because it's not about that. It's about what makes you feel good. Do you have any favorite toys you want to share with us? Like your, Ooh. your like faves? Um, I love this one. So uh, what I'm holding right now is a bullet vibrator. Uh, this is the WeVibe Tango X. And the reason why I love this one so much is because it could do so many different things. Um, I showed this before when I was uh, binding the cock and putting a really powerful vibrator against it, um, using this uh, against the head of a penis, using this on a clitoris, using this on nipples. I think that everyone should have a good bullet vibrator in their artillery, um, no matter what your kink, no matter what you're into, because you could get really creative with something this simple. So um, this is, this is my, uh, you know, top recommendation for someone that's just like, I just want a tool. This would be it. Well, that and lube, but. Right, lube. Always, always have lube. <laughs> Briefly, before we move into mm -hmm. how someone brings this conversation to their partner, aftercare. Can you throw down some, I mean, aftercare is so important and I don't always do the best job at the end of my conversations of going back to aftercare. It's something in our society that's definitely not promoted enough, but especially after, and, and aftercare should be, in my opinion, after any sort of uh, intimate, certainly BDSM activity. Can you give some advice on some aftercare for specifically CBT and even things you should have on hand 
just in case in the aftercare experience? Absolutely. So um, ask your partner what they may need afterwards. Um, if they don't know, uh, you know, a lot of people think like aftercare, like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to need a massage. I'm going to need uh, someone to bring me a Gatorade. I'm going to need, um, you know, uh, an ice pack, whatever it is. These are all things that could be great for aftercare, but it could also be as simple as, do you need to be left alone for a little bit afterwards? Do you need to uh, make sure that I'm there for you if maybe we were doing something that had uh, some intense emotions going on? So maybe I have just been absolutely degrading the hell out of you for the past hour. Do you now need me to hold you and give you praise and remind you that I don't actually feel those things towards you, that it's part of this role play mm. um do you need soft touch to come back down um and this is something that i like to remind folks that aftercare is not just for your bottom um if your top has been like using a flogger or something and going and going and going maybe they need their shoulder rubbed uh maybe they need to be told that they did a good job um so taking your time to know what you need your environment to look like, what you need your partnership to look like. So what you need that dynamic to come back to, and then the physical aspects of it. Um, so after you get up to pee, uh, do you need an ice pack? Do you need to lay down? Um, maybe take a while before you put on pants or anything that's restrictive. Uh, maybe, you know, let your body come back to being able to spread out, uh, especially if you've been in, in chastity or you've been doing a lot of constriction play, like allowing your body the time to not go back into something that can compress it again. Um, allowing yourself the time to make sure that any and all sensation is coming back the way that it should. Um, painkillers after a session again give yourself the time to make sure that you can feel everything um don't take painkillers before a, se a session because we were talking about you want to make sure that your pain receptors are on that you could pay attention and listen to your body um hydration as well uh, after we do something intense, especially with all that adrenaline and everything going through our system, even if we were just laying there and taking it, um, keeping hydrated can be really important to make sure that our body is able to rebalance itself out. We're able to reground ourselves as well. What are some red flags or warning signs in your aftercare where you might be like, oh, perhaps this is perhaps something went too far maybe we should go see a doctor mm -hmm. uh discoloration so uh looking out for discoloration uh looking out for not having sensation coming back right away um if you were doing ball play in which both of the balls were getting the same amount of attention but you're noticing unilateral pain so you're only noticing pain on one side of the balls, like only one testicle, that is something that could be a red flag because you may have experienced testicular torsion or you may have had a little bit too much compression on one. Um, if you notice uh, that there's any bleeding or bruising or anything like that, it happens, especially, you know, if you're doing any sort of cutting, piercing, impact play, um, but watching how those heal. So this is not just like, oh, okay, we're in the bed afterwards. I'm talking like a couple days down the line, watching how they heal, um, watching how you feel the next time that you get an erection. Um, you know, do you notice that there is pain that wasn't there before? Uh, so this is also a, a little bit of a long game. You want to make sure that you're paying attention to your body signs, not just right afterwards, but as you sort of continue on with your life. So a good question is then, is there a frequency with which this should be done? So is it okay to do this every night or do you need to allow the body to heal in between? What are your thoughts on that? So there are people that will absolutely argue me argue with me on this, but if you are doing something that's a little bit more intense, if you are doing something uh, like uh, heavy restriction, if you're doing something like 
sounding like impact play. Um, I always think that it's good to give yourself a little bit of a break, um, you know, to allow your body to come back down to it. It's like going to the gym, right? You know, it, you there are people that go to the gym for three hours a day, um, but there are people that are like, no, you you need your rest day. You need your body to uh, have that moment to come back down to that whatever your your normal sort of existence is, whatever your um, plateau, if you will. Uh, so there are people who will be like, no, I can go into chastity every single night and I can have my ball slapped every single night and I'm totally fine. Cool. That's you. You understand your risks. You know, your body. Fantastic. If you are just getting into this, pace yourself, Re rest day from the gym. Yeah. Uh, time to recover and see how your body bounces back and what it's healing mm -hmm. time is. It just makes sense. Uh, for me, and I would argue that people that don't take a rest day when they go to the gym are risking some serious injury. But yeah, you <laughs> want to know that those muscles are healing correctly. You want to know that it's not two days down the line. And I didn't notice that this one bruise hasn't gone away uh, in the way that it should because I just keep on getting new ones. So right, right. Good advice. Now, for the listener who's like, I am ready to do this. I want to do this, but I haven't begun the conversation with my partner and it's a hard one to bring up to someone particularly if they're fairly vanilla what are your thoughts on initiating the conversation around honey I'm ready for you to torture my balls or like so for instance in my case obviously I've discovered I'm kind of into some of the opposite end slap it around some cocks how do you start that conversation without totally freaking your partner out? Yeah. Um, so I love to sort of start with something that you know and see about adding to it. So if you are a person that regularly gives blowjobs or regularly gets blowjobs, ask your partner, hey, um, you know, how would you feel if I, or how uh, would you feel if you integrated a little bit more teeth into your blowjob, right? Like, I kind of like the idea of you being a little bit more rough with me down there, maybe with a hand job being like, hey, like, would you try squeezing my balls a little bit? See how that feels. Um, again, these are sort of stepping stones into CBT um, and then taking it from there, gauging like, did I like how that felt? Did they like how that felt? Um, and adding a little bit more at, time, uh, at a time, you know, uh, have we tried bondage already? Do we know how to do that? Can I ask someone how they would feel about maybe wrapping a necktie around my cock or around my balls? Um, from there, if you are ready to sort of like take a leap into something even more intense, there is a wonderful tool called a yes, no, maybe list. Uh, we have a free one on our website. Uh, so it's at babeland.com backslash yes, no, maybe, and you can print it out. Uh, that list is pretty, and again, air quotes here, basic. It just has a couple of ideas on it, but you can add as many as you'd like. The idea with a yes, no, maybe list is that you have three columns. Yes, no and maybe. So your yes column is going to be yes willing, as in I haven't tried this before, but I really want to give it a shot. Uh, yes into, so I have tried this before and I want to do it again. Maybe, I'm not sure, I'd consider it, um, or no, which is this is a limit, this is a boundary, I don't want to do it. You and your partner will each get one of these lists and then you go far away from one another and you fill it out. The reason why you don't want to fill it out together is because you are filling it out by you and for you. This is just about you, your desires, your boundaries. And then your partner will come back and you'll compare your lists. Um, having a list that already has CBT mentioned on it or, you know, editing it and making your own and including that uh, could be a really good way to make sure that it gets mentioned on the list. Uh, so, you know, you want to make sure that you go through all the ideas there and maybe add your own. Um, but it could be a really good way to break the ice to say, oh, I had this on my yes column and 
you also had it on your yes column. How do you feel about giving that a go tonight? Um, you know, maybe it was on their no column. And although we have to respect boundaries, maybe their idea of CBT was sounding and burning and piercing. Um, so you could say like, oh, I noticed that CBT is on your no list. Could you let me know what those boundaries look like for you? Um, because again, you don't want to push anybody past uh, what they want to do. You don't want to try to coerce or convince somebody, but with something this broad, sort of getting a spectrum there. Uh, but a yes, no, maybe list. And that's a great way to facilitate any sort of conversation around a, I want to try this, but I don't know how to bring it up. Yeah, I love that. There are so many people that reach out to me after they listen to a podcast. And the number one question I get or comment I get is, I really want to do this thing, but I'm just so afraid to ask my partner. And I would wager to bet most of us haven't even done a yes, no, maybe list with our our partners when it comes to our intimate life. Even if you think you're just vanilla, it's still a good place to start, right? With what all do I like? What do you like? So of course, I'm going to have an accompanying article in the description of this podcast that's going to have the link to the yes, no, maybe list, two toy suggestions uh, that you have given us here. And hopefully I'll get some more out of you after this podcast. So listeners, you're going to want to scroll down and check that out. At this point, I guess, how about you tell my listeners where they can find out more about you, uh, where they can connect with you, Babeland, any other uh, place that might help facilitate the journey into cock and ball torture. Absolutely. Uh, so you can find me um, at Babeland. Uh, so babeland.com is our website. If you are on social media, we are at Babeland underscore toys. Um, so, uh, if you are on Instagram or, or on Twitter, you will see, um, I often get tagged in the pieces that go up on there. Uh, the only reason why I don't promote my personal social medias is that unless you have a food fetish, um, you're not really going to be interested in what I have to post because it's mainly just a, what I ate today and also pictures of my dog. Um, but, uh, we have locations in New York and in Seattle. Uh, so we've got a location in Park Slope in Brooklyn, one on the Lower East Side in Manhattan. We have another Brooklyn location that actually is going to be opening up in the next couple of weeks. We'll be announcing that shortly. And then in Capitol Hill, Seattle. Uh, the great thing about any of the Babeland locations is that everyone that works there is a trained sex educator. Um, with different topics, uh, like something like CDT, um, we have a lot of books as well. So even if there is, uh, you know, there, there's not a staffer that can speak to this uh, on a level that you want to learn about, we do have those resources available for you. Um, and yeah, that is where you can find me. Do the sex. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you. And Babeland is also online. You can order, yes, you can Babeland. shop <laughs> it online. So uh, just so people know, you can go to the store if you want to or check it out online. Well, thank you. I will for... say our website does have a lot more uh, of the cotton and ball devices uh, available online. We have a whole cotton and ball section. So there is a whole cock and ball section. I'm going to be checking it out. So thank you for joining me. Uh, are you ready? I'm ready for my shot now. I've been drinking coffee and I'm Here's ready for half. some vodka. Here we go. Cheers. All right, well, cheers to CBT. And listeners, I'll see you in the locker room. <laughs> Bye.